Hi guys, my name is Andy Federuk. I'm from the Gumbowski Lab at SDSU, and I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about our research, give you a snapshot about how we study myocardial infarction and metabolism. So it's well known that heart disease causes about 25% of all deaths. That's 610,000 deaths per year as of the latest data, and 370,000 of that is coronary heart disease. So all of this results in about 735,000 myocardial infarctions a year. As you can see, that's a huge problem. So to address that, we have research. So how we think about this in research is that the heart is normally well supplied with oxygen here. It's got a lot of vasculature and capillary beds so that oxygen can readily diffuse to your muscle, which enables your heart to contract, which enables blood to get to your brain and body, and you live. Problem happens, though, when your vessels get all clogged up. There's a bunch of junk in your vessels, and uh, oxygen doesn't diffuse properly. So at some point, there's too little oxygen, and you get hypoxia which is loss of oxygen, and ischemia, which is loss of nutrients. So when you shut off the oxygen diffusion through the capillary beds into your heart muscle, you start getting some cell death. Your cells start rupturing, they leak, they necrose, and they die. The problem is your heart functions compromised. So there's all kinds of downstream problems that happen because of that. But in the short term, the death of heart cells prevents your heart from functioning, so you're at risk of death. So how this works in a metabolism context is, Normally, the heart is well supplied with sugars and fats for energy, right? So you ingest these sugars and fats and glucose, and uh, the cell takes them up, and there's many steps cycle, and out of this entire cycle, you produce these two critical molecules, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide hydrogen and flavin adenine dinucleotide dihydrogen. Those are fancy names for electrons. Electrons are important. So what happens is these electrons get made from your fuels. These electrons move to this mitochondria, right? This is the powerhouse of the cell. You make a bunch of ATP from the mitochondria. ATP is very important. It allows you to live. If you don't have ATP, you die. OK, what can go wrong, though? So normally, oxygen is imported into the cell, goes to the mitochondria, and it takes up these electrons that you're generating from your fuels. And when it takes up the electrons, then you produce water, right? An innocuous substance. And out comes CO2 from your cycle, producing that waste. But what happens if, for instance, you have blockage of your capillary beds and vessels in your heart, and you don't get the oxygen imported? So you shut off the oxygen import into the cell. So the problem is you still have sugars and fats for a while, and you still have plenty of these substrates in the cycle making these electrons. So what happens to the electrons if you don't have oxygen? Well, you can't make H2O, right? So what happens is you start leaking electrons, and these electrons start attacking other things, causing lesions, damage. So this is your nucleus. It has DNA. Electrons can come in and oxidize your DNA, which damages the DNA and prevents the DNA from making proteins, for instance. So electrons can also leak from the mitochondria and start damaging your proteins. So as you know, the heart cell is full of proteins that enable the cell to contract, and so the heart can function as a pump. Well, these proteins have amino acids, and they're also prone to damage by these electrons. OK, so I've told you the problem. What can we do about it? So the thought is, what if we have antioxidants, right? So antioxidants, so an example is NAC or N-acetylcysteine, which you can buy as a supplement, or Trolox, which is another chemical you can inject that functions as an antioxidant. And of course, we have intracellular antioxidants, for example, catalase. It's an enzyme that breaks down hydrogen peroxide. So if we can figure out a way to get these antioxidants into the cell right here and destroy some of these electrons, wow, then we might be able to fix some of the damage, and then the cell can live for longer, and we have a therapeutic. Hopefully, it results in decreasing deaths from myocardial infarction. So if you'd like to read more about this, uh, go ahead and look up Glombotsky Lab at SDSU. We'll give you the lowdown. Uh, please subscribe and like us every venue you got. All right, see you later. Thanks for watching another presentation here at the Science Class. If you want to know more about the research that you just heard about, check the video description below for a link to that lab's website. And if you want to see more presentations like this in the future, you can subscribe to us by clicking this button here. Thanks very much.